What's going on, everybody? Welcome to a box opening. One of many that we're going to do right now. I'm also standing. I don't know if you guys can tell. There's no way for me to really show that, but it's a standing desk, and I'm standing right now. Well, let me make sure this camera is where we want it to be. It's very bright, so... I don't think lowering the white balance is really where I want to do it. No, it's not. Color intensity is also not a brightness. Is that better? Maybe? I don't know. I guess we'll deal with it. A trash can for 90% of the cards. Oh boy. Oh boy. Alright. So let's let's get let's get to it. What do we got here? A little zombie token. We're probably not gonna show commons because let's be real, no one no one cares about that. Got a Johnny's presence. Welcome. A Johnny's welcome, not presence. Got a little uh, lightning strike, uncommon, because wasn't lightning bolt a rare, or a common? <laughs> Just like, yeah, this is this can be common, but lightning strike, let's go, let's not go crazy. I'm going to sort these all in uh, common, uncommon, rare order, so that we can switcheroo. And Palladium Morris. Not great, not the, uh, not the Elder Dragon we're looking for, but nevertheless, uh, an Elder Dragon. And then a submerged boneyard behind that, I guess? Maybe? That seems strange. So Plady Morris is uh, Flying Vigilance and Trample. Move this trash can closer. And whenever it deals damage, it loses hexproof. So, oh, got a knight. Oh, interesting. Okay, so wait a minute. There was no basic land in this first pack. The submerged boneyard replace the basic land wow okay that's interesting i like that a lot that's pretty cool because now we have a forest and that's less cool all right so oh i think there's a foil in this bad boy commons ir irrelevant commons we got these are upside down yeah sure they are a little uh little demolish seismic rift it's basically demolish come on don't care nobody cares about that bone to ash let's be real that's like halfway that's like a halfway to a cryptic command it's the two modes you care about countering the spell and drawing a card but you don't you can't counter a regular spell just a creature spell volcanic dragon i think this is going to actually take way too long to focus on the individual cards so you're just going to have to trust me and this sun glazer cleanser and a foil act of treason like you do It's all good until people throw away basic lands. You never go bone to ash. That's true. That's true. Oh, that's not appropriate, but it's true. Oh, a little cat token. A little 1-1 one -one lifelinker. A lifelinky boy. All right. So it takes a while to get into the to the to the pattern here. You get like the uh, you're going through like the motions. The motions are similar. Tectonic rift. It's demolished still. Sift. Very good. Sift is very good. Uh, if you're a fan of uh, drawing three cards, I am. It's good. Oh, Declare Dominance. If you guys have been watching the draft videos, you should know Declare Dominance is basically my least favorite card ever. Chaos Wand. That card's good, though. I'm a fan of Chaos Wand. I'm not a fan of opening it as one of my rares, but what can you do? Oh, oh. Oh, we got a oh, got a, a little soldier and a tranquil expanse. Not too shabby. Who gets excited about that? That's funny, right? Look how exciting! Oh, I'm putting these cards in the wrong piles. Not good at this game. All right, so we're just gonna we're gonna do all three of these bad boys at the same time. We got the Gaspark twins, a gargoyle, and a dragon egg. Don't care about any of those things. Rare. Metamorphic. Alteration. Sometimes when I go to the uh, the tailor, I'm like, can you can you give me a metamorphic alteration? I'd really appreciate it. And we got a foil thud, which is basically just fling. It's fling. It's 20, 21st century fling, right? There is an apocalypse behind me. There's also a doom in front of him though, so he's got to get through the doom first. We got a goblin. This mic is really uh, surprisingly in the way. Which is similar to life. It's 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 art mimicking life, right? 
One, two, three, four. Commons. We got Aether Funnel, Millstone, and a Militia Burglar, otherwise known as a Bugler. I think Burglar is funny. And a Lathless Dragon Queen. Probably unplayable. Six mana for a five for a six six flyer, which is it's fine. We've seen worse played. And then but then whenever whenever another non token dragon enters the battlefield, you make another five five, and it's like Okay, so I have this six six, and I'm making another five five. How many dragons do I really need? Brickbeard, thank you so much for the resub. Really appreciate it, buddy. Pull something good resub. I'm working on it. We're working on it. We got uh Things are happening. Another Zombone. And a Meandering River again. One, two, three. I'm gonna take the, the last four, and I know if the fifth card is also an uncommon, then we have then we have a foil. I oh, got a little lightning mare. Exclu I, I was gonna do these all at the same time, right? Exclusion Mage, which is really good. Surprisingly, one of the better iterations of this card. Um Reason being that either Adept was double blue and Exclusion Man is only single blue, which is significantly good. Hey, Militia Burglar again. Otherwise known as Bugler. Cleansing Nova. Not an expensive card, but a versatile card. Destroying all creatures or destroying all artifacts and enchantments, both of which are very good. Solid, solid, mo solid modes. I don't know why I did this standing up. I'm regretting it now. Because the lighting is not great and I have to keep swaying. I think I just totally peeked and saw this one. It's okay. We'll get through it together. Draw three, a Druid of Horns, and a uh, poor man's cast out. Cast out or cast away? I, I think it's cast out. Um, slash Ixalan's Binding. Worse than both of those, yet reprinted, because we need three of that four mana effect in the format. I, I suppose. And a Valiant Knight. Not terrible. 1,000, basically a million good luck bits. That is basically a million good luck bits. Josh, thank you so much, buddy. Really appreciate it. I'm actually going to sit down now. Because I was standing for a while before we started this as well. Okay. Might have to adjust the camera and stuff. Whoop. This is, be this is much better. I didn't think it was going to be better because we're opening packs, so like... I can see more stuff. All right. I think we're good. I do have to hold the cards up higher now. But sacrifices must be made. Oh, this is a cool one. We got a... A Nicobolus, uh Checklist card. It says, use this card to represent a double-faced Nicobolus card in your library or hand. This is actually pretty cool. And we also get a Thopter, too. So two tokens. It makes me think there might be a Nicol Bolas in this pack, but I don't know if that's the case. There was not. There was a Gigantosaur. I would love it to be like if you get that, it's because you've gotten a Nicol Bolas in the pack. Um, got a different Thick Boy this time, though. 10-10 ten, ten for 5. So what can you do? Hey, guys. I walked away to make egg salad. Did Frank explain what those rolled up things are on a shelf? Those are towels. <laughs> Why are you like this? Oh, boy. All right, now we got these three guys. Psychic Corrosion. Interesting card. Whenever you draw a card, each opponent puts the top card. Top two cards of their library into their graveyard. This is similar to Sphinx's... What's it called? Sphinx's Tutelage? What's the difference in those cards? I'm going to find out. Sphinx's Tutelage is whenever you draw a card target from the top. So, um, if they're both non-land, you repeat it. So Sphinx's Tutelage is obviously better because you're repeating it. It also has six mana draw a card, then discard a card, which is great. Um, the only difference is that Psychic Corrosion is each opponent, not just one. So, that seems better. Got a land and an Elf Warrior. Not not really concerned with either of those. And then we have these three jobbies. Whoop. Oh, one's Bone Dragon, though. We messed up. Aegis of the Heavens was the was the other uncommon. Uh, well, plus one, plus seven till end of turn. Not really a card we care about. So we have, like, two Mythics so far. We have Bone Dragon and 
Palladium Ores. Two dragons. The the Brian Kibler special over here, but all right. Then we got a Woodland Stream, ooh, and a Tezzeret emblem. I get excited about cool cool tokens. One, two, three, four. Oh, there's a foil. Let's see what let's see what we got here. We got three uncommons. Gift, uh, Nightly Valor, and Regal Bloodlord. All, all fine. Apologies for the uh, the webcam not focusing correctly, but I assume you guys will know what I'm pulling here. Foil. Uh, Rogue's Gloves. Ru Rouge's Gloves. And a Dark Dweller Oracle. I actually don't know how I feel about Dark Dweller Oracle. Dark Dweller Oracle is... What's you guys? It's basically two mana. It is a 2-2 two -two if you can zoom correctly. There we go. Sack a creature, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. Um, the sacrifice part is fine. It's a 2-2 two -two for two, so its stats are fine. It is a goblin, so that's fine. And, um, you know, being able to exile... It says you can play that card, uh, not cast. So if you hit a land, you can actually play the land. The problem is you have to sack a creature to activate this. But, I mean, creatures die. That's just life, you know? That's the circle of life. And Hunter's having a good time back there. He's getting a getting a little lick on there. More like Dork Dweller. That's actually probably accurate. It is probably more like that. Look at this guy drinking drinks around his Magic the Gathering cards. Oh, a bat token and another Meandering River? I think we've opened a thousand Meandering Rivers so far. I think I have a place that... Oh, another foil, looks like. There's a lot of foils in this box. I was going to say set, but no, it's not a set thing. Uh, all right. Oh, that's actually... Oh, it's... I see what happened here. So, you... Yeah, all right. So, we've got these three guys. Nightmare's Thirst, Volley Veteran, and uh, Draconic Disciple. I actually like Draconic Disciple, but it's obviously not playable. Like, I mean, just having a, a, a mana guy... That can tap for any color. That also can make a dragon in the late game is pretty cool. Here's our rare. Thorn Lieutenant. If you guys are following me on Patreon, I wrote a one of my favorites articles for M19. And it had... This guy was in my in my top eight. Just a, just a solid card. Two, three for two. And it has two abilities. One of which is relevant in the late game. The other is relevant if it ever dies. So, not too shabby. Got a, another bat and a submerged boneyard. Man, this is the uh, this is the Esper box apparently. All right, molten golem, a recollect, and a diagraph ghoul. I I feel like molten golem is versatile enough to see constructed play, but seven mana. Let's be real. No oh, fraying omnipotence. Is that possible? Can your omnipotence fray? I don't know. Tranquil Expanse again, and a Goblin. I think the only three lands I've opened are Submerged Broneyards, Tranquil Expanses, and uh, Meandering Rivers, which is kind of funny. I laugh. No foil. Alright, so what we got here. Uh, Deckhand, which is a 2-2 Spirit, unblockable. Uh, Rise from the Grave, and a Gearper Guide. Not terrible. And the rare is a Vivian's Invocation. An invocational school. I don't know. I don't know where that would be located. Thopter and an island. Not exciting, so I'm not going to show you guys. It's not personal. It's just a choice I made. But, you know. It's life. You guys gotta suck it up. Hey, murder is actually in this set. I didn't believe it until I saw it. Murder is in the set, confirmed. I have yet to see one murder. I've done about 10 drafts, I think. Maybe 11. And I have yet to see a murder, so. <laughs> murder murder uh, ends up causing some very funny magic uh, sentences where you're like, man, if only I had, if only I was able to murder that guy. Boy, I haven't yet to see a murder. Yeah, all right, we're done here. Also, Blanchwood armor in the set is pretty interesting. And a Banefire. Banefire is not a card I'm excited about monetarily, but it's just a cool card.
Hope you guys are enjoying these crinkles. We got some. Oh, got a stone quarry and also an Johnny emblem. So let's get that place out of Johnny's and then we can talk. One, two, three, four is the next card. It is a common. So. Got the uncommons here. Knightly Valor, Make a Stand, and Fountain of Renewal. I would love if you got like an emblem or if you got like the, the flip card and that meant you were going to also get that that card. But I don't think it's possible to do because of print runs and things. So we got uh, Gore Claw. Terror of the, the Calcisma. I don't know what he what he did that was so bad, but plenty more is the ruiner prices. No results found. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? A zombie and a mountain. All right, that's exciting. By exciting, I mean, you know, probably the opposite. I'm really bad at putting cards in the right stacks. I wonder if that's a. I wonder if that says something. Uh, Arcane Encyclopedia, a Rupture Spire, and a Herald of Faith. I don't think Rupture Spire... Rupture Spire at Uncommon is interesting. I mean, I guess we do have all of the dual lands at Common, so I guess it makes sense to not have that many fixing lands at Uncommon. Omniscience. Somebody do a price check for Omniscience. I don't know what this goes for in real life. I know on Magic Online it's down to, like, 50 cents. But I wonder if it still has its value IRL. Twenty thirteen is eighteen ninety nine. That's interesting. Quacker two thousand, buddy. Where have you been? I thought you died, and I had a wake for you and everything. All right, what do we got here? Foul orchard, orchard, orchard. Foul orchard, and a dragon token. Orchard was me saying orchid and orchard combined because those are actually two words that I get confused quite frequently. I loves me a party. Six dollars on... All right, whatever. That's fine. That's fine. What do we got? Double cast, satyr enchanter, and a herald of faith again. Double cast is also an interesting card because it's basically just fork. Uh, but uncommon, but also it's only, it's a spell you cast. When you cast your next instant or sorcery, you can copy that dude. So, you know, they're like, let's, let's make it a little bit, because Fork was always OP. They were like, whoa, we can't, we can't print Fork. That card's broken. Detection Tower. I don't know. I like that this is a land. Do you guys remember the, um, the Spotlight? The glare, I think it was called Glaring Spotlight, which did the same thing until end of turn. Your opponents and creatures, your opponents control with Hexproof can be the targets of spells and abilities they don't have as if they didn't have Hexproof. This is a versatile land. Like, I like that this is a land. I could just put it in my mana base and play it like that. Dingusig, thank you for the Orchard Bits. The orc Orchard Bits. Orchard Bits. We know what's going on here. Bat and Planes. No, no foil here. All right, organizing my piles a little bit here. Uh, I got this knight. I don't know if this two three. I don't know how good this two three knight is. It's a knight. It's a novice knight. You guys will never see. God, this, the C nine twenty is real bad at focusing. It takes like a million years. <laughs> Quacker two thousand. Thank you for the resub. Really appreciate it, buddy. Gone, but not never forget. Hashtag never forget. As long as it's, a, it's enchanted or equipped, it can attack as though it did not have Defender. And another Meteor Golem. And Escape Shift. Look at that. Look at that. The, here's the Mythics we're opening. Old-timey stuff. Actually, Escape Shift, as far as monetary value, is pretty good, right? I don't know. See, I don't know if these cards are still, like, 20 bucks, or if they're like, oh, it's it's reprinted, so now it's worth 3 I know Magic Online Escape Shift is, like, 2 But let me check out our Mythics so far. Because I think we'll have like four. Yeah, I think we got four mythics so far. Which is a lot. I mean, that's probably close to all that we're getting. Which is unfortunate, but... Whatever. I bet we can open one Planeswalker. It's like six Planeswalkers in this... In this set. Not including a Cabolas. Alright, Planes and a Soldier token. Alright, alright. No, no foil, no foil. What do we got here? 
Vine mare. All right. I think this is actually constructible. When we were playing yesterday, Rob was like, you need to put four Vine mare in your sideboard with that green red deck. You got to put four Vine mare in your sideboard. And I was like, why? And he's like, it's got Hexproof. It's a black deck just can't be. I'm like, how many black decks are there really? We didn't play many black decks and it was fine. I still think the card's good. 5-3 Hexproof for four is pretty good. There's not many Hexproof creatures in standard. And uh, for a good reason. The, the mechanic is not fun. Also, Colossal Majesty and a another Draconic Disciple. And the rare is a Demon of Catastrophes. Oh, wow. This art looks amazing. This art's great. Wow. I have not seen the regular art. All I saw was, like, the weird art. Let's see if you can get, get a close-up on that, buddy. I can't because... C920, why are you going to be like this? You guys kind of get the idea, right? It's just art looks really good. That's great art. See how excited I got over that, that, that Demon of Catastrophes art? Oh, Shield Mare. Horses for days. A Vigilant Bayloth and a Ravenous Harpy. Vigilant Bayloth is funny because it's like one of the worst iterations of this card. Like the 5-5 five, five for 5 with just Vigilance. But it's still good in M19 Limited. So you're like, alright, well, I'll take it, I guess. Leonin Warcaller. War Leader. He doesn't call the war. He leads it. Also, another card that was in my top 8. I'm just going to give you the top 8, apparently. Um, reason being, this card is basically just Hero of Bladehold, right? Like, it doesn't have Battle Cry, but the, the tokens have lifelink. So it's kind of like a trade-off. It's also a 4-4, not a 3-4, so, uh, I don't know. It's it's good. This card seems good. We'll see. What are you guys saying right now? Brian, I did indeed get the goods. I did indeed get the goods. All right. So, oh, I just, I just accidentally saw that, so I know it's not super exciting, but it's a cool card. I like that card as well. I uh, got a little sleep. Aerial Engineer. And a Suspicious Bookcase. Wow, that is one Suspicious Bookcase. I don't know if I'm really comfortable with that bookcase's existence. And the rare, like I said, not super exciting, but it's cool. I like I like Spit Flame. Three mana for four damage at instant speed is great. Uh, and the fact that you can get this back, there's significantly more uh, dragons in standard than you would like. In limited, this is just great because... It's four damage for three, and maybe you get it back by playing an uncommon or a common dragon. But, um, you know, in in constructed, like you're playing Glorybringers, you're playing Nicobolus, you're playing all kinds of things, and like, you know, a late game, a late game Nicobolus or a late game Glorybringer, while great on their own, uh, sometimes let you pay one more mana to draw one or more cards because you might have multiple cities in the graveyard. Like this card seems very, very good. Uh, Brian, singles were pack packaged great. I, I also liked that the, the package of the singles was not sealed, which was nice because I didn't have to, like, waste the bubble mailer. And, it, you know, it was just nice and open and uh, I could just pull the cards right out. And I, I know it sounds silly, but it was a nice touch. All right. So, oh, foil. Exciting. All right. So what do we got here? These two are the exciting ones. We got these three guys. We got a Rupture Spire, a Dryad Green Seeker, and a Surge Mare. Surge Mare being MVP in a lot of our limited games, obviously, because because uh, one person said it's not very good, and I was like, no way, I'll prove you wrong, and I did. Dryad Green Seeker. I don't know how I feel about this card. It's amazing and limited, but is this a constructible card like for green decks that they just never draw a land off the top? I don't like a one three for two is just fine stats already. And if this draws you two cards, if it draws you two lands in Constructed, like, it's worth it at that point, right? I don't know. I'm really interested by it. And Illuminous Bonds is the foil. More that Mikey Hopkins... I'd probably rather play Jade Light Ranger. Yeah, but they're not... They fit in different points of the curve. They're two completely different cards. I mean, like, it, you don't have to choose between one or the other in those two cards. Nope. 
Night and Plains. Oh, I wow, I literally just went straight for the rare. What a, what an amazing thing to do. What a dummy. All right, what do we got here? Actually, this is a uh, Master Artificer. Skilled Animator. It was close. I, he was an Artificer. He is an Artificer. Uh, poison Tip Archer and a Plague Mare. So another horse, Poison Tip Archer, and another another uh, Artificer. And the rare was this guy, which is Liliana's Contract. For five mana, you draw four cards and lose four life. It's a Tidings, basically, but it's a rare Tidings that you also lose four life from. But at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control four more demons with different names, you win the game. I don't know if there are four more demons with different names in Magic, let alone in Standard. I'm going to look up... I know there's Bells and Lock. I know there's the new demon from this set. That's two demons I know about. I'm going to look up demons in Standard. You guys ready for this? I, and I started humming the... Y'all ready for this song? Ahmed Eternal is a demon. Apocalypse demon... Archfiend of Ifner, Baleful Emmet, Demon of Catastrophes, Demon of Dark Schemes. Demon, there are a lot more demons than I thought. Razaketh. Soul Stinger is a Scorpion Demon. Okay. I'm on board. There are apparently ten demons. Is there? Is it possible? To, oh, this is an enchantment, too. That's interesting. So they could just kill it. I thought you cast it, and then, like, if at that moment you have it, then you win. But apparently you cast it, and then they can still disenchant it, or Hierophants... Cage of that. Nailed it. All right. Oh, swamp and a knight. Two, three, four. All right. Got these three guys. We got a, a lightning mare, a vampire sovereign. I don't even think I've seen. That. Oh, yes, I have. Oh, yeah, it's when winners of battlefield, target opponent loses three, you gain three. Lightning heals is their face, and it's a 3 4 flyer. And uh, Enigma Drake. Familiar card. Rare. Phylactery Lich. Not a demon. Also, a zombie. I did not think this guy was a zombie. I didn't think zombies had the capacity to work with artifacts in any form, really. You probably would kill yourself trying to get four demons. That's actually. Uh, that's risky business. As. Uh, oh, another. Another Nicobolus. That guy's going straight into the Nicobolus deck because that's where he belongs. Because it's Nicobolus, you get it. It's not a, it's not a joke. I'm just saying. Another another hex mare. Uh, we got this weird uh, psychic symbiont, and in the middle we got a fiery finish, which is a weird card to me. So like seven damage is a lot, but it's sorcery, and it costs six mana. And it can only hit creatures. Like. No. You don't do anything that we want you to do. Runic Armasaur seems great to me. Does this card seem great to anybody else? It's a 2-5 for 3, which is great stats. 7 total stats is great because it's like a 3-4 for 3. And then whenever an opponent attacks an ability, activates an ability of a creature or a land that isn't a mana ability, you draw a card. So if they activate their Mutavault, you draw a card. If they activate... Um, I can't think of any other abilities, but you know what abilities are, so I don't have to tell you. I don't know. Card seems good. And I missed my dentist appointment because I'm literally the worst. Yeah, don't activate that man land, bro. You will get wrecked. Oh, an ox token. That's exciting. I got excited. No foil, though. All right. Let's not do that again. All right, what do we got here? An Enigma Drake and Urza's Arcane Encyclopedia. I keep wanting to call this Urza's Tome because it's literally... There's a two or three mana artifact that draws you cards in Dominaria, which is very similar, which I think this is actually better. And an Enigma Drake. So, And an Elvish Clan Caller. Other elves get plus one, plus one, and search your library for another one for six mana. I don't know if that card's going to see play in the elf deck. I mean, it's a two-mana lord, so maybe. But who knows? Who knows how elves work? Santa Claus does. 
here comes Santa Claus. Here comes Santa Claus. All right, now Santa Claus land. What we got here? Rex Sage, which I'm really glad is back in standard. I like Rex Sage a lot better than Thrashing Bronto Don. It's so much easier to cast. One green over two green. And when I get the ability out of it, when I destroy their artifact or enchantment, I want to have the creature around afterward. I don't want it to. I don't want to have to sacrifice it to get rid of it. Uh, additionally, the earliest you can get rid of something with a Bronto Dawn is when you have four mana, or presumably turn four. Earliest you can get rid of something with Rex Sage is turn three, and you still get to keep the pressure on. So that's pretty good. Also, a Johnny's Pride Mate and Grave Digger. Good, good pack for enchant for uncommons there. And then we got this bad boy, which is a mentor of doo doo, a doo doo mentor. Sorry, sorry, mentor. So there's one planeswalker of each color, and there's a nickel bolus in the set. So six planeswalkers, more than than any set that I can imagine, other than like previous core sets. And none yet. None yet. None yet. They are mythic, though. Um, switcheroo. Is this the... No. So, switcheroo, lightning strike, and an Aether Shield Artificer, which is a 3-3 for 4. And at the beginning of your combat on your turn, target artifact creature you control gets plus 2, plus 2, and gains indestructible. Pretty good with Thopters, right? Like, they have a Thopter. They have a Thopter, you make it a 3-3. An indestructible 3-3. Not too shabby. And a Open the Graves. Open the graves. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, create a 2-2 two -two for 5. We have not opened any Karns yet, unfortunately. I don't know if they are... I don't, this, they're probably not going to be any in this box, I bet. Alright, one box down. Well, after these packs, anyway. The box itself has been... Has been removed. The physical box has been removed. Oh. I, I totally looked, but... Look, I don't care. We're just going to jump right to it. One with the machines and a foil Lathless Dragon Queen, which is kind of cool because this is probably going to be uh, reasonable in Commander. It's a it's a legendary creature. It's got a cool ability. It's in a great tribe, and it's a foil, so that's cool. And a one with the machines. And uh, let's see if the uncommons are anything special. Millstone, Shield Mare, and Colossal Majesty. hope you guys are able to see these. For some reason, the... The C920 has a hard time focusing quickly. Come on, Logitech, get it, get it together. Here comes Santa Claus. Brian, thank you so much, buddy. <clears throat> also glad, and uh, I will talk to you later, I'm sure. Elf Warrior, got four. This guy's print. All right, we're looking for one planeswalker in this box. One. Because if we only get one per box, it's going to be rough. Uh, what do we got? Psychic uh, Rogues Gloves and Heroic uh, Reinforcements. Seems good. And a Dismissive Pyromancer. This is another 2-2 two, two for 2 red rare. And I'm not sure how I feel about it. I don't know how I feel, how I feel about either of these guys, right? That's... Discard a card, draw a card. Sacrifice it to deal 4 damage to a creature. So, like, it's just a looter. But the fact that they're all 2-2s two for 2, and they're all, like, they have relevant abilities. And tribes. Like, one of them is a goblin, this guy's a human wizard. Meh. Druid of the Bear... Druid of Horns. Militia and Hyromancer's... Uh, Hero... Hyromancer's Cage. Kaje. And a Bugler. And a... Uh, uh, militia Bugler. And a Transmogrifying Wand. What do we got here? One, two... We've got five packs left. One Planeswalker per pack and we're good to go. We have not egg salad in hand. Did we open bolus? We have not. I'm kind of wondering why you can't just take me with you to make your elk your elk your elk salad sa <laughs> your elk salad sandwich egg tears. What's that about? Just take me with you. Also, if you're eating egg salad by itself and not in sandwich form, I will be disappointed, but I will accept it because you're a New Yorker and you probably know what's up. So, 
I got this 1 1 that becomes a 2 2 with uh, if you control another creature. If you control three or more creatures, so it's like battalion almost, except you don't have to attack, it just goes, it just triggers during combat. And then we have another uh, spirit guy. And this this card has also been seeing play in the Gifts Ungiven. God's Gifts Ungiven decks. I don't know what I really. God Pharaoh's Gift decks. Uh, it's when it enters the battlefield or dies, put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard. I played against two decks that had this in it the other day, and it's just a 1-1 one, one for 1. So you're just like, yep, mill myself for 6. I fulfill all my God Pharaoh's Gift criteria. And we got a Desecrated, Desecrated? Desecrated Tomb. Which is whenever one or more creatures you can... One or more creature cards leave your graveyard, create a 1-1 one, one bat with flying. As you can imagine. <laughs> Turn out here for some modern events tonight. I'm playing Jessica. Actually, playing Eldrazi. Any 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 tips? Um, yeah, tell him to not play Tron because that's for monsters. Tell him that there's still time to save his soul, and I uh, wish him luck. Tips for you? Don't suck. Reliquary Tower. This uh, this really cool. Skyrider Patrol uncommon from uh, you know from good limited decks and then you got this really bad worst iteration of a specter ever in magic four mana for a one three flyer they discard a card not at random and then whenever they discard a card they lose two life however maybe that's good in other formats I don't know Scholar of Stars is our foil ooh Sigil Sword of Valoron is our rare not great it's okay, we got three packs. Three planeswalkers. No big deal. I think we are probably do one more mythic in this box. So we'll see. We'll see if the odds are ever in our favor. Like they say in Game of Thrones. We got a thud, a uh diamond mare, and a horizon scholar. All these pretty alright. Pretty alright. And a goblin trash master. Never has a rare been more aptly named. It is a Goblin Lord, which is interesting. I can't hate it that much. But I do. Another Dragon Token, but this is a baby Dragon Token. That is the, uh, the Egg Token. Alright, let's see what's up. Two more packs. This one and one more. Stitchers, Supplier, Aether Tunnel, and a Diagraph Ghoul. Diagraph Ghoul being a classic. Probably going to see some play sometime. Amulet of Shitkeeping. Okay. This card's actually fine. It's got two two relevant sideboard abilities. Creature tokens can negative one, negative O for token decks. And whenever you become the target of a spell or ability, an opponent controls counter it unless they pay one, so it just basically fluster storms anything that targets you. So, not terrible. How many mythics? I think four. So if this pack it has another one, it'll be five. But I'm going to be honest with you guys, I never open very well, so. What do we got here? I don't even know. Is this the seven, seven, three? Yeah, they get shuffled back in. And then a Pride Mate and a Rex Sage. It's actually not a bad pack there. And I think that's our first Inferno Hellion. And a Wind Reader Sphinx was the last rare in that box. Not one Planeswalker out of six. That is unfortunate. All right, so to recap, our Mythics. Yep, only four Mythics. That is not, that is not, I think that's on the low end. I think usually between five and six is the average. So, of course, we get the, the low end of that. Money-wise, not terrible, I guess. Escape Shift among Omniscience, probably about 25 bucks. 20 bucks maybe for the two of them maybe that's terrible i have no idea it's probably bad i don't know i don't know what bone dragon and palladium orders are going for but um but yeah that was our first box so uh thank you guys for watching really appreciate it hope you guys enjoyed not sure how i feel about it but uh if you guys are uh, subscribed to the channel you can like and subscribe below and uh we'll uh, be opening some more boxes so be sure to check those out as well, well see, how, see if we do any better